my research shows me that part of the colony collapse can definitely be pinpointed back to pesticides and GMOs. I know that we all know what the right thing to do is, it's just that we're such a capitalistic society that the bottom line is always profit. In 1978, I went to Fiji, I was going to move to Fiji, but I didn't have enough money in the bank account to actually go to live there. When I got there, coin money, it said, food for people, not for profit. That's my bottom line. Food is for people. It is not for profit. For anybody out there on the council who hasn't seen um, King Corn, please look at that because it shows that now DNA, our DNA has corn in it and it should not. So please pass Bill 113. I am definitely in support of it and we need to start working hard on the Big Island to keep it going in the right direction with no GMOs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving to Waimea. Two more testifiers, please. I believe this is our last testifier, Sean James Levy. He's in support of himself and he, excuse me, supports Bill 113. Hey, aloha, honorable council members. Sean James Levy testifying from Waimea here. Um, Strong support for Bill 113. This bill has reasonable exemptions. He got the emergency exemption. You know, if there's uh, drought for the cattle farmers, it could test it in the lab and come before you and uh, deploy that. You know, there's that in place. You get the indoor testing exemption. You got the grandfather clause in there. So it's a, this is a reasonable bill, which uh, it's strong support of. Now, I'm also here on behalf of my brothers at Taro Farmeries in Waipio today. And I just want to remind the counselors of that episode of how the Taro GMO uh, ban was put in place. And as I don't know what to say, you know, on behalf of the Taro farmers, except they don't want no damn GMO Taro. Um, we even have problems with the hybrid that the university puts out, and it's a lot of it is consumer perception. Um, you know, the price goes down. And so that's why I hope these papaya farmers, these poor guys, I hope they get getting some supplemental income from Monsanto them for their appearance to supplement their rock bottom farm gate prices. You saw the price drop after how many millions of lobbying the Japanese export market, you know? And with the taro, uh, it's a consumer perception thing. I don't want any of that. A cultural issue would completely manipulate it and contaminate all of our other uh, traditional varieties. And so the solution, like our squash farmer, Waimea squash farmer, is in regenerative techniques. Get off the chemical drugs. Every farmer that's gotten off the chemical drugs, seen their yield boost, their prices go up. Here I'm showing, I was reading this uh, book here, Adding Value to Locally Grown Crops in Hawaii. You get your price goes up, consumer perception, price point goes up if it's Hawaii grown, locally grown, organic, and then you get your price go down, mass produced chemical methods. So this is, you know, for the local farmers, GMO ain't the way. It's an export thing. It's a technology export. $250 million in seed corn, you know, they pay no GET tax on that. And so, in any case, I'm rambling here, but I thank you for your strong support and the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. And Donnie, if anybody else um, comes into Waimea, um, please Donnie, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to skip the rotation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kohala, two more testifiers, please. Our next testifier is Susie Sutton, representing herself, speaking in support of Bill Number 113. Aloha, my name is Suzanne Sutton. I am representing also Lee Riddle, Mary Winters, and Geraldine Littell, and my family. We support the passing of Bill 113 as is. Stop messing with our DNA. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next uh, testifier is Hannah Roberts, representing herself, her partner Emily Pitti, Unborn Child Patients, Dan Roberts, and Mimi George, speaking in support and making comment on Bill Number 113. Thank you very much. My name is Hannah Roberts, and I'm an anthropotic physician, and 
really in support of this bill because it, in medicine we're seeing this unprecedented rise in autism, Alzheimer's, cancer, allergies, and a lot of this comes back to the health of the gut. And, you know, we don't really have the scientific experiments um, that we need to show the safety of these, but what we do have is things like CAFO pig farms where in America they can't even make sausages from the intestines that those just fall apart. So where are we getting these, like, nice intestines from? We're getting them from places like New Zealand where they're not raised on genetically modified food. And, you know, as a naturopath, we look at, you know, the gut is the seat of health of the whole body. And so um, this is really upsetting to me. And other thing I think that we need to really take a protective stance is that um, genetically modified food is really, it's genetic pollution that once it gets out, you can't take it back. And this is like multiple generations that we're talking about. Um, and there's also been a lot of talk of, I've heard today about these like sort of fanciful claims about how genetically modified food's gonna save us from, you know, we'll have this golden rice. And it's like, all of these claims have really never come to pass. And all we need is a few more moringa trees or, you know, there's so many solutions that we already have. And so um, instead, instead we have nightmare solutions. Like if you look at India where the crops are failing, they have all these allergies, and also, you know, farmers are committing suicide in mass. And so, and this is pretty much all of, all across the world. If you look at what they're saying, like, oh, we're gonna have these drought resistant things and this and that, it's just really lies when it comes down to it, when you actually look at the science and what's from the past. And so, um, I really am in support of this bill and think it's a great opportunity to protect this island and future generations. Thank you. In Pahoa, do you have two testifiers? Ms. Barbara Sean Ander, uh, representing herself. And following her will be Ms. Donna Fisher, also representing herself in support. Thank you. Thank you, members of the council, for the opportunity to uh, present both my husband's opinion and myself. We strongly support this bill. Do you want to spell your name, please, and the person you're representing? Uh, my name is Barbara Conlanger. My husband is James W. Graham. Thank you. Andy. Andy. I hear there are people who have testified here desiring a study. They're asking the council to stop and then let's study certain effects about this or that. Meanwhile, nothing would happen. So, people who are interested in studying things may continue to study. Meanwhile, we need to take a stand here and make sure that this bill is passed, hopefully, by a unanimous council and we will make a strong statement for our island thank you very much thank you <coughs> next please aloha council my name is donna fisher and i am testifying in support of bill 113. i am a organic farmer a beekeeper and a grandmother and among, besides these qualifications um, for opposing gmos i am appreciative of your looking after us as a healthy, clean island. We all deserve to have clean, fresh air, water, and soil, and the ocean deserves to be healthy. We have all heard the claims about GMOs providing more food and the need for less herbicides and pesticides, and we all know the realities. This has actually to be true, just the opposite. So thank you for voting in favor of so your people you. and our health and your own health and not for the corporations. Thank you very much. I'm uh, sorry, two more in Hilo I, I need to bring up to the table would be Lowell Jose, I'm not sure I pronounced it right, and Linda Bernardo. They're not here. Um, is Judy Howell or Howell here? No, it's under my husband's name. 
Okay. So it, it just puts you and Peter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. How do I say your last name? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you move down? I was. Okay, you can go ahead. I was, I'm against the bill. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Erlinda Bernardo, uh, representing my family. We are papaya farmers, and I strongly oppose Bill 113. If the bill passes, then the future of farmers will be at stake. I know that right now, uh, we should consider that if everybody has the freedom to farm, farmers should have the freedom to choose what they're going to produce because everybody has the freedom to choose what to buy and what to take in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you state your name, please? My name is Noel Jose. I'm a papaya farmer and my parents are papaya farmers. I strongly oppose Bill 113. My main concern about this bill is um, the registration. You know, as papaya farmers, you get all kinds of things to think about every time. You got to think about chemical costs, fertilizer costs, gas costs. I always wonder like, how the government can like, help us but, with the farming and stuff, but they cannot help us with this kind of stuff. Like the registration, that would be like one extra thing we got to worry about. If we got to register, like everybody got to register, not only us, you know what I mean? Like if you get like a couple of papaya farms growing in your front yard, you got to register that too. You get avocado trees back in your backyard, you guys got to register, re register that too. So I strongly oppose Bill 113. I think you guys should get rid of this bill because it's a waste of time. Thanks. And Kona, Scott, are there two more testifiers? <laughs> testifiers, Charles Flaherty, in support of Bill 113. And then we have April Pacheco to comment on Bill 113. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Hawaii County Council. Um, I'm speaking in support of um, Bill 113 and um, in addition, um, speaking on behalf of Kona White Civic Club in support of Bill 113, um, the Kona White Civic Club was founded in 1952 in support of scholarship and uh, civic education. And um, this has been a really remarkable um, public participation and educational process, uh, regardless of the views and opinions and the facts that have presen been presented. I think that um, it's been an excellent opportunity for the public to participate and learn about this particular issue as well as the very uh, basis of, of living sustainably um, on Hawaii Island. Um, the traditional customary um, uh, practices of the Native Hawaiian people were developed over centuries and um, still exist today, are still being reclaimed today, and we believe uh, that those uh, centuries of learning should be what is looked to in addition to um, science, but always following a precautionary principle whereby you depend upon, we depend upon what has already been learned for many generations in this place um, before bringing in um, things that uh, potentially are endangering that. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I forgot to ask you to state your name. So. I'm sorry, Charles Flaherty. Thank you. Next, please. Ooh. And please state your name. Aloha. My name is April Pacheco. And I just wanted to say that I don't understand what everyone is doing. Hawaii has the ability to be self-sustaining. We do not have to rely on the government. We don't need the government. We have people here who are smart and strong and capable. We can become our own and take care of our own. Everything that we are doing to the ground and putting in the ground is leaching into our ocean. Our 
fish are sick, our animals are sick, our insects, our crops, everything is sick. Our people are becoming sick. My sister is 25 years old and she came down with a digestive disease that is all based on food. Unfortunately, that is her. That is the way she lives and teach his own. But I think we have a responsibility to the keiki because they're only going to learn and going to be what they are shown. We need to show them a way to be strong without going with the current. Some of the strongest people in the world went against the grain. Some of the strongest fish went against the current to make sure that their keiki, that their species, were going to be okay. And we all know that the freshest water comes further up the river unless one of us got a hold of it and started poisoning it. I just came here and I started taking care of these goats and before I did, they were sick, they were dying, they were fed off of grain and given vaccinations and their babies kept dying and they were sick and they were skinny and I started feeding them passion fruit. I started cutting down wild weeds. I even started feeding them papaya and banana that humans didn't want to eat. And none of them are dying anymore. We need to go back to the basics. It's what's going to save us. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Holloway, Peter Holloway. Um, moving to Kohala, two more testifiers, please. <coughs> Our next testifier is April K. Lee, representing herself, Jeffrey Lee, Jasmine McCracken, Lance McCracken, Leo McCracken, Carol Mashura, and Carol Madraski, speaking in support of Bill Number 113. Thank you very much. Aloha, honorable council people. You have a tremendous job and we honor the work you're doing in paying attention and we often knew you have applied to the subject. I have a double degree uh, from college in biology and psychology and I started in genetics in 1966 which is almost 40 years ago and I do believe that there's much good that can come out of genetics but the key is who controls genetics and when you give the history of the corporations that want to control the genetics, a very good read. And you spend time looking at what they've brought to this planet, the most toxic chemicals we have on this planet, without regard to human life. And the answer is read was the reason they did this. If you think they've changed, then vote no on this. If you are wondering if you should keep the principle of absolute caution in the area of your main job, which is protecting us. And what would you do if the Kunhona were standing right beside you and speaking in your ear as to what you would do for these people who many are coming here to heal? And we have one of the few last places in the entire world where we have the freedom of a political and democratic environment. And now we need the freedom to have a brain and genetics that allow us to think for ourselves. I don't want to frighten you, but I want to tell you that genetics actually will allow the function of your brain and your being to actually end your life after what a corporation would consider productive years at about age 50. You can be programmed genetically for almost anything.